age 100, the former Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger, has died. Henry Kissinger shaped decades of US policy, dead at the age of 100. He just traveled to China this past summer. Kissinger served as Secretary of State under Presidents Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, he was also National Security Advisor. While some are reflecting on his accomplishments, not some, I mean, this is a mass media. Well, they're reminiscing about all he did for mankind. And it was all seemed so lovely and flowery. But uh, many, though, are now branding him a war criminal. What is his legacy? Here's what Rolling Stone has to say. Measuring purely by confirmed kills, the worst mass murder ever executed by the United States was the white supremacist territory Tim, terrorist, rather, Timothy McVeigh. McVeigh, who is his own psychotic way, thought he was saving America, never remotely killed on the scale of Kissinger, the most revered American grand strategist of the second half of the 20th century. Just let that marinate if you can, Rolling Stone again. Now, what warrants this kind of response, you may be asking? As National Security Advisor, Kissinger arranged and oversaw a massive expansion of US bombings in not just Vietnam, but Cambodia, Laos as well. The death toll experts estimate at as much as 50,000 box, adding those, well, extraordinary numbers, just horrific. 1970, Nixon demanded the Air Force to intensify its bombings. Kissinger relayed the order by saying a massive bombing campaign in Cambodia, anything that flies on anything that moves. Media like with that quote, indiscriminate killing. That's what it sounds like. As Richard Nixon's national security advisor in 1971, Kissinger was the prime mover behind the US's choice to quietly back West Pakistan and its campaign against residents of East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, which would claim hundreds of thousands of lives. As Ford's national security advisor and secretary of state in 1975, Kissinger gave Indonesian dictator Suharto an explicit green light to invade East Timor, an action which resulted in the deaths of at least 100,000 civilians. There's a theme here. Before his time in office, he acted to sabotage peace talks in Paris to end the conflict, but brought those talks to a conclusion in 1973, winning a Nobel Peace Prize. The accord, however, completely failed to end the war, which concluded with the US South Vietnamese defeat in 1975. What is your legacy? I don't know if you think about that. I suspect every individual will wonder one day how they'll be remembered. I, I guess. Yasmin, I want to start with the announcement of Kissinger's death, age 100, and the glowing obits, the commentary that I saw. I don't know if you did initially. Uh, They were pouring in, and they all sounded the same. And then Rolling Stone dropped this headline, okay? And I said, why? Right on cue, we were in the meeting, and and I said, Marissa, I wonder if there's anything out there that doesn't agree with this this flowery portrayal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the author of that Rolling Stone piece, Spencer Ackerman, uh, he's one who I think you can count on for exactly what you were looking for. Uh, he's very, very well informed. He's been covering national security issues in this country for a long time. Uh, so when I saw this headline and when I saw that he wrote it, I really wasn't surprised at all. He's been incredibly critical throughout his career of the American military and all of our overseas operations and foreign relations and things like that. He wrote a book recently called Reign of Terror, in which he is very critical of the U.S.'s response to the 9-11 attacks. So, I mean, this coming from Spencer Ackerman, there's no better source that it could have come from, in my opinion. Uh, He's very well informed, and he's not one to sugarcoat, as I'm sure you noticed from that headline. Yeah, I love it. Uh, just a truth speaker. I also yeah. think he's brave, and and I don't know of his work. I haven't read as much as you have. I intend to, though, based on this. You had me at war criminal, okay? But it, I call him brave because this this media. I don't. 
well, yes, I do probably mean to rail on the media all the time, but everyone's so focused on fake news and you know disinformation, which is different than misinformation, okay? You're deliberately going out there. But I think one of the most um, problematic things in American society today, perhaps throughout the world, is this group thing. It's this lazy group think, it's this cowardice, although I get it. Some people will be ostracized, some people will lose their jobs if they just dare to investigate something and just represent, not opinion, just did you know about this? And so I wonder what you make of that. This is a very important writer here who's done this. And I guess in this case, Rolling Stone did something good here in in publishing it, as is, I, I hope with the integrity that it was written. But this mass media group think, okay, you have this versus what everybody else is saying. And by the way, I will tell you, Yasmin, that as soon as this came out, okay, and Marissa pushed it out, within, I guess, an hour, I heard one of the cable channels stop. They just added one word, his controversial legacy. That's not what you said an hour ago, okay? Now your group think, oh, I better, I'll just, same report, but they just inserted, and then, Put a little disclaimer at the end. So, what do you make of that? Do you agree with me? It's dangerous. Yeah. Well, I think. it's funny that you mentioned that because a lot of what I was seeing whenever I first saw the headline was more about just like every outlet was trying very carefully to choose each word to not criticize Kissinger and also to acknowledge that like maybe he wasn't the most well liked person. Maybe he might have done some things in his career that were completely and utterly heinous. You know, I think whenever things like this happen, you know, whether it's someone who, whenever somebody who served our nation's government passes away, right? It's a strange reckoning for Americans because nobody wants to speak ill of the dead, generally speaking. But then there are some figures in American history who are living, who have passed recently. They're so bad that you, it's hard to, you know, celebrate the legacy that supposedly they were building this whole time, you know, like the legacy. However, Kissinger thought he was going to be remembered. He's going to be remembered very differently. Or maybe, you know, he understands that Americans are better informed now than we have been in the past. We know about the things that he's done. We know about the impacts that his act that his actions have had on millions of people around the world, right? But the thing is, if we go back now and criticize anything that Kissinger has done, he did everything he did in the service of the United States government. So in order to criticize him, we're in effect criticizing the government. Everything our government stands for, everything our government has done and has said, yes, Kissinger, we can do these things that you're advising us to do. Yeah. I think you said it brilliantly. And I also believe that even though, okay, in official capacity, Nixon Ford, right? He Mm -hmm. served and and wielded enormous influence over these US presidents and, and our government as a whole. But as you know, he was in the ear of many, including the current one, presidents. He stayed around forever and didn't just go off to some quiet community and play golf. He wanted to keep influencing. I, I heard this morning that he's getting credit for opening up relations again after a little frosty better part of a year between the United States and China. He cleared the way for President Biden to have that, that summit. And I think that's dangerous, fresh faces. Young ideas, and that doesn't always mean chronologically. New people, new energy, people who don't look like Kissinger is, is something that is necessary as we look at these legacies, you know, that are formed as after, after Ronald Reagan died. I remember that things were shaped. This was executed to a T. You, I even shed a tear as the sunset came down and Ronald Reagan was laid to rest in Sydney Valley. And it was so beautiful. I shed a tear. You almost forgot, okay? I'm sure, those air traffic controllers didn't forget about losing their jobs. And a lot of other people said, What happened to the inner city? That said, these sanitized portrayals, I guess. I took the long road there, Yasmin. I'll give you the last word. Yeah. So I think whenever we have these situations, we all have to kind of say, Okay, should we be celebrating these people? Why were we celebrating them in the first place? And why we clung on to these people for so long? He was 100 years old and he was still in the ear of presidents, as you mentioned. And we have to ask, why is that? 
And I know that we're actually going to talk about this more in a story that we're going to be covering later on in the show. But it's interesting to see there is oftentimes a lot of overlap between the two parties, whether or not on the surface, underneath, there's they have a lot of the same people advising them. They have interesting people advising them who you think wouldn't be advising to certain parties, things like that, donors from across the aisle, whatever, what have you. A lot of it is really just about power. And the two-party system is kind of just a, a front at this point. Yeah. And we know this because when corporate America and these same companies give to both sides, mm-hmm. hmm, yeah, they think exactly. you're serving their interests, not ours. 